Good evening and welcome Bethel TV viewers. My name is Jess Butcher and I am a, a second year overseer here at the Bethel School of Ministry and I have the greatest privilege tonight to be standing here with Dr. Randy Clark uh, where we are kicking off um, his School of Healing and Impartation for 2023. Dr. Randy, welcome this evening and I personally am so looking forward to this conference and even just to the next 10 minutes, I attended your school um, as a student here at Bethel six years ago in 2016, 2017. My life was absolutely transformed. I had an encounter with God during an impartation time with you. And since then, I have gone on a trajectory of pursuing the healing ministry and you are one of my heroes. So just thank you uh, to begin with for impacting my life. And I know that... Uh, viewers, you are going to be absolutely transformed in the next three days, if not in the next 10 minutes. So, Dr. Randy, welcome. And how are you feeling for this year's conference? What do you feel like God's going to be doing in the next couple of days? Well, God yeah. is faithful. He's always true. And we see Him heal every time we go for healing. We'd be a, a great shock if nobody got healed. Yeah. We expect to tonight, a minimum of 10% healings to the number of people that's in the crowd. Uh, if we have a, a, a good meeting, I, I it wouldn't be shocked to see at least 20. We've been in some time 20%. So it's going to be exciting to see yes. what God does. And I know there will be a powerful impartation the, the, uh, in the message where we go for impartation. We just had one of those today and it was a a uh, holy mess. It was it a holy was, mess. <laughs> it was awesome. It was it was uh, amazing to see what God was doing. Yes. And it, God is faithful. He does it all the time. He backs up His gospel with signs and wonders. Amen. He backs up the gospel with healing and miracles. And in the Great Commission, He tells us that we, when we lead somebody to the Lord, we're to teach them to obey everything Jesus taught the disciples mm -hmm. to do. And at the top of that list was to heal the sick and cast out demons, tell people about the uh, good news, was preached to the poor, and uh, th this is still to be what we accompanies the preaching of the gospel. Amen to that. And healing the sick. I was here last night. We were seeing hands and miracles everywhere. And I know that even online that God is going to fulfill even that commission that signs, wonders yeah. and miracles will follow you even behind your laptop screens, your cell phones, that uh, you are have a first class seat in this conference as much as you would physically in the auditorium tonight. And Randy, I just would love to ask um, in terms of online miracles, miracles, signs, and wonders. Do you have a secret favorite um, moment where someone was viewing a session online or you were doing an impartation where someone from home or yes. on the phone was healed? Can you just yeah. share with our viewers tonight? Well, I, I'd like to share about the impartation. Yes. I, I, it was a rerun and a woman in London was watching on television, a rerun. Wow. And the power of God hits her during the impartation prayer and she ends up on the floor, unable to talk and unable to move for hours. Her husband comes home, finds her there. She's incommunicative and he thinks she's had a stroke. He calls the equivalent of our 911. The ambulance shows up. Guys come in, they put her on a stretcher because she can't move, she can't talk. They get her all the way to the hospital before the anointing lifts off of her to where she can begin to talk. Wow. To and said, there's nothing wrong with me. God is just was touching me. Unbelievable. I, that was an amazing that testimony. Is unbelievable. And that, that happened. Another one is a pastor in Brazil was watching live. He's laying on the couch and he's been asking God to uh, increase the anointing on his life. And the spirit comes upon him as he's lying on his sofa and he begins to weep and he begins to shake. And within a year, there'd been a tremendous, like his church had more than doubled. I think it was like quadrupled in one year. And he, after that experience on the sofa, he began to see so many more healings than he had ever seen in his life. He came to me this last year and was telling me this story. Come on. And it was, it was just amazing. So I, I know God touches. I remember one time we were doing a radio interview and wow. God came. And uh, I, was, I was in Brazil and God came and a woman's got this problem in her leg, it's real serious. Power God, as she's driving the car, comes on her, she feels the power going to her leg and she gets healed. 
Another time oh, we did a, yeah. a radio interview in uh, Florida. And it went out, and people would start shaking, driving down the road. People came to the radio station, and they were blasted. They was out on the floor. They, it was hundreds of people came, and it happened. And it, the attendance at the meeting doubled that night because of what God did <laughs> over the radio broadcast. Come on, Dr. Andy. Those. I'm standing here. I don't know about you. I can feel the presence of God. <laughs> and if I, I'm standing here in person feeling that and I have no doubt that at home our online viewers are, are experiencing that too and I remember um, Dr. Rand you've shared one or two testimonies where even individuals who have been in your meetings have been on their phone and you've said stand in proxy for someone and uh, messages have been sent whereby even the person receiving the text message they receive healing in their bodies can you do you have yeah, one I or remember, two stories? I know the one you're talking about yeah, yeah. it happened here yes. in Reading and I had a word of knowledge about a certain condition in yes. the certain ankle. Yeah. I've forgotten now, but I think it was the right one. And it involved metal. There was a man here whose aunt had that problem. Mm -hmm. He texted her, believing that it was going to be her. It's her. And he texted her. She doesn't get it. And she's on crutches. And she's told she's going to never be able to do certain things again. And she gets healed while she's asleep. She gets up to go to the bathroom, doesn't get her crutches, and realizes halfway to the bathroom she's walking without crutches, without pain. Hallelujah. Years later, I met her in Canada, and she had the video, not video, but pictures of all the metal, the plates, the screws that was in, and how that she was now, I mean, instantly, and it happened during the night, and then later when her, her, she and her husband are having breakfast, she opens up her phone, and sees the text no from her point. nephew telling her that she believes this is for her. That, I'm speechless. <laughs> this is, this is, this. do you have another one? I do. Please, right. jump so in. So <laughs> we're, in, we're in Taipei, Taiwan, and uh, I had got this word of knowledge at night, and I'd asking God, give me names and conditions, and I didn't know how they were connected, but one of them, I said, God, that can't, because I'm, it's all Chinese. God, that can't be right. Oscar is not a Chinese name. and But anyway, I, I have it down on this little piece of paper and the, my team is giving words and one of the persons says, trouble swallowing. And two Chinese young women in their 20s knew a Buddhist friend whose little boy, two years old, had to be fed through a tube who did not have the ability to swallow. And so over two years has been fed through a tube. They say, this is for this boy. His mom and dad are Buddhists. They call the mother, say, we're going to pray for him. Put your hand on him. We're going to pray for him right now. Instantly, after that prayer, he was able to swallow. A year oh. later, uh, uh, the mother and father come to the meeting, give their life to Jesus Christ. Oh. And so when the, when the girls come up, the young women come up to give the testimony, I, first time in Chinese, I didn't hear it. But when they went to English, I said, wait, 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 what's the name? They said, Oscar, and I showed him the paper. I'd written down Oscar in trouble swallowing that, you know, it was amazing. Come on. And it was those two young women. They, oh. they, they took it. Now, I call this modern technology. Instead of standing in proxy, it's better call them on your cell phone and let them hear the prayer for Amen. themselves. We, still, we see more happen with that. Come on. It's kind of like an, an upgrade over standing in proxy. Amen. Modern technology. And you are being set up tonight through modern technology for yeah. the supernatural power of God to touch you and heal you. And even let the testimonies that um, Randy has just shared of metal dissolving, walking without crutches, swallowing um, with certain conditions. These are not just stories. These are prophesying and testifying of what God is going to do um, not only tonight, but in the next few days. And so, Dr. Randy, I, I know we just have a couple of minutes left, but would you just mind blessing our online viewers that even what's going to happen tonight is going to impact them as much as if they were sitting in the crowd? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I I bless the people that are watching. I pray for you to create in them faith. I pray that the Holy Spirit would be just as powerful in their living room or wherever they're at as it is here. I pray, God, as they see and hear everything they're hearing here, God, that your grace would be active and moving in their life. We pray that, God, that there would be scores and scores and scores, if not hundreds of testimony that happened by people who are watching tonight. And I pray in Jesus' name, not only this week, during uh, these uh, meetings that are 
are being uh, videoed and sent out live. I pray not only there'll be healings, but I pray also there will be powerful impartations of the Holy Spirit and activations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to those that are watching. In Jesus' name, I bless you and I pray, Holy Spirit, touch them. May they be aware of your presence touching them tonight. Give the team words of knowledge for people at home. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Amen. Dr. Randy Clark, thank you so much uh, for your time here. Online viewers, we are so excited uh, to see what God does tonight. So join us in worship in a moment. God bless. We've come. We've come to join the song sung long before our lives to raise our voice along heaven and earth alike. We see. Faithful hand, your mercy without end, a king who bled and died, a God who sacrificed, be enthroned, so be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand.
There is a history of your spirit coming down to meet us here. Heaven's embers still remain. Memories of glory and of holy fire and power drawing near. God, here and now, come fan the flame.
across this room, can we just begin to sing in the spirit? Can we begin to lift our own song to the Lord? This is the praise that God inhabits.
Let's lift our hands together tonight. Lord, we bless you. We declare that you are a holy God. Lord, we focus our attention on you. We set aside the distractions of the day. Lord, anything that's going on that would hinder our focusing on you, we set it aside. We set our affections on you tonight, Lord. And we come with expectation. We come with anticipation, Lord. We believe that you're going to touch lives tonight, Lord. We believe you're going to heal the sick. We believe that people are going to be set free. Lord, we believe you're going to work signs and wonders. You're going to work miracles tonight, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, for your presence tonight. And we celebrate you. We celebrate you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise tonight and just celebrate him. We bless your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do tonight. Even before we see the manifestation of it with the natural eye, we give you thanks. We know you're going to move tonight. You're going to touch people, Lord. So we give you thanks. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Turn around, find about three or four people. Let them know that you're glad they're here. Just bless them. Just take two or three minutes. Thank you, worship team. Amazing, 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 amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We are glad that you're here. How many of you, this is your first time to be at a global event? Let me see your hand. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. I'm a little bit surprised. Where have you been all of our lives? I mean, wow. Well, we're glad that you're here. We also welcome those who are watching via live stream. We know that you can experience the same thing at home that we're experiencing here. There's no distance. What God is able to do, he's able to zap you as you're watching your computer or whatever you're watching on. He's able to zap you there just as much as he is able to zap you here. So, and it wouldn't hurt my feelings if some people got zapped tonight. It'd be a great way to start the conference off. Do we have any volunteers? Okay. Something wrong with you guys. Okay. Uh, some housekeeping matters before we move into the, uh, the rest of the service. Just some announcements we need to, to make. On level two, which is up the stairs there, you'll find the information table. The team there is to help you with all of your questions. So if you have any questions, you need anything, go to the information table. The testimony table is there as well. So we want to make sure that you stop by and share your testimonies of what God is doing at this event. Um, celebrate what God is doing. So if you have any testimonies, go by the testimony table. The lost and found is there. And our very special River Rock Cafe is there. Make sure you get coffee and get snacks there. They're available. And then the Global Awakening booths are there. The team will be there to talk to you about a variety of things, schools, the ministry school, partnership, network. So they're there if you want to come by and visit at the booths. That's all on the second level. Uh, be sure to wear your uh, event wristband during the event. These serve as your ticket to get into the building, so you need to wear your wristbands. Please, please, please take all of your belongings after each of the evening services when you leave. You can't save your seat overnight. Oh, I know. That's so sad, isn't it? Uh, it? You can leave your stuff in your chair. It'll just be in lost and found when you come in the next day. It won't be in your chair. So 
make sure you take everything with you. And do help us on the parking. Uh, do not park in the Sheraton, Turtle Bay lot, or any of the surrounding businesses, uh, business parking lots. There are, are the reserved areas for the staff and team. There's plenty of parking in the large lot and the rodeo lot behind the building. So make sure you work with us on, on the parking. Well, I have the uh, privilege tonight to talk to you about one of the ministries that Global Awakening is involved in, and that's our international ministry trips. That was our director of our IMT, our international ministries trip. Let me ask you, has anybody been with us somewhere around the world? Four or five? Well, have I got a treat for you. We usually take between five, well, this year we'll take between five and 600 people with us somewhere around the world, mostly Brazil, but we do go to other. I was expecting that. Mostly to Brazil, but we'll go to other places as well. So I want to show you a short video and then tell you about some of the trips we have coming up. How many of you enjoyed the video? Wasn't that an amazing video? Awesome. Best video ever. It really was, wasn't it? It was a very fast jet, by the way. Uh, we do have coming up for you. If you want to go, there's still room on the Brazil trip in March. We have a trip in March. We have a trip in May, I believe it is. We have a trip uh, in June for youth that maybe we'll talk about another time. So we have, I think, five or six trips we're going to Brazil this year. We haven't seven, seven trips to Brazil. Uh, we love going to Brazil. We see the Lord work everywhere we go, but more in Brazil than I think any other place that we go. We see more miracles, more healings, blind eyes open, deaf hear. One of the smartest things that I did as a pastor, uh, right after I met Randy, was take a team and go on a trip with him uh, to Brazil. As soon as he came to my church, we gathered about, took about 12 or 13 the first time, and it was life-changing because the people go, they see God use them to heal the sick, work miracles. They come home and think that it's going to happen at home. And guess what? It does. So I encourage you to go. Pastors, take a team with you. Take your leadership with you. Uh, you'll be able to celebrate. What I would do when we would go on a trip, I would turn the Sunday morning service over to the team and let them share the testimonies and share the fruit of what God did. Were we able to get the video working? In the back, there'll be someone to talk to you about the trips. There's also some material you can take with you. Would you welcome our good friend, Bill Johnson, as he comes? <laughs> uh, uh, all right, it is ready, okay. We're now gonna see the greatest video ever. For over two decades, Global Awakening has been taking teams on international ministry trips. Randy Clark's heart and call to the nations is released through weeks of training, impartation, activation, and hands-on ministry. Through church services, crusades, and street ministry, the power of God is manifested in miraculous healings. The lame walk, the deaf hear, and the blind see. In these dynamic meetings, the lost, the hurting, and the broken are drawn into a transforming encounter with Jesus. Churches are strengthened, pastors and leaders impacted, and 
individual lives are touched and changed forever. The kingdom of heaven is dramatic. We, we tried. Um, one other trip I did want to highlight for you is a trip to the UK. And April, uh, at this point, it'll be myself, David Wagner, and Charity Cook. It'll be another trip that we'll take. So if you don't want to go to Brazil, go with us to the UK. It'd be a, a, a great trip. So now would you welcome Bill as he comes. Thank you. You're nice. You're nice. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. I'd, I'd do a group hug, but someone would get hurt for sure. Well, my, uh, for the second time, welcome. Welcome to Reading. We're glad that you're here. For how many of you, uh, this is your first time to a Bethel event? Put a hand up. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Didn't you watch YouTube? They told you not to come. <laughs> I've never done that before, but I, I, I don't know. It's amazing what you'll do in the anointing. It's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. All right, let's move on, let's move on. Dro drop it, drop it. How, how many of you have been to a, a Bethel event before? Oh, good, good. So it just looked like everybody's hands went up. Well, um, I'm glad you're here. We, um, uh, we're gonna receive an offering. We receive an offering each night and let me tell you my approach to offerings. First of all, I like them. I like them because you can take something that's natural and make it eternal. It's not that money translates into eternity, it's the impact of what I do with it translates into eternity. And thank you, thank you. Thank you. Some don't need a mic. So, so. <laughs> Um, there's a day coming when we will be able to trace the effect of every dollar ever given, the effect on eternity itself. And in that moment, nothing else will matter that I ever did. It, it, will, be, it will be what I did with what God gave me, the, the smiles on my face, the words of kindness, the generosity, whether it's in a gathering like this or in a restaurant or with a neighbor, whatever. It, it's that lifestyle that makes a mark on eternity. It takes something that, um, it takes something that's been in circulation, that's been used for groceries and car payments and house payment, but also pornography and drugs and all kinds of stuff. And it takes it out of that environment and says, I'm going to mark eternity with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's an incredible privilege that we have. And I love that. So that's, that's my approach to this offering, but let me add something else. I. It cost a lot of money to come. Some of you came, my goodness, some of you came from South Africa. How many, you almost can't get here from there. How many are from South Africa? I, I miss them right here, bless you guys. As some of you came from just all over. And it costs a lot, and I understand that. Here's my approach. We're going to pray tonight, and I believe whatever it costs to get you here, we're going to count as an offering, and I'm gonna pray for return. We're gonna pray for bounty. We're gonna pray for breakthrough. Some of you came from the other side of town and you still came. <laughs> and we're glad you're here too. But honestly, I, I, you're, we're not investing on, you know, drinking iced tea on a beach in Hawaii. We're, we're investing in the kingdom of God, marking our lives for the rest of our life so that we can leave a deposit on planet earth for the honor of the name Jesus. That's what we're doing here. And uh, so I'm, we're going to pray together for this offering, and I'm going to include everybody's expense to get here. But I also want to give you a chance to sow into one of, I think, the most important ministries on the planet. My life, I will never, ever be the same because of Randy Clark 
Global Awakening, and what they've done all over the world. The fires of revival have been started in nation after nation after nation, and God has used this ministry to do so. And so when you and I join together to say, you know what, we wanna sow into that, that's what we're doing. We're saying, Jesus, we want you exalted. We want the harvest to be big. We want the gospel demonstrated in purity with passion and power. And that's what uh, Global Awakening does. And so I'm gonna ask you to join with me tonight in, uh, in sowing into this ministry. And then we're going to, we're gonna pray and, and really believe God for increase, increase. You guys have like envelopes and stuff still? Yeah, okay. So ushers, you, you, okay. If you need an envelope for a giving record uh, or to put cash in or whatever, these ushers, usherettes, they've got envelopes. And so put your hands up high real quick. And honestly, no guilt, shame for not being able to. You, you spent what it took to get here. And honestly, I, I consider that extreme generosity. But if you'd like to step into the next phase with us and so into this ministry as I do all the time, um, I'd like for you to just put a hand up and uh, I need one of those envelopes too, if I can get someone, someone who's in a good enough mood to bring it all the way over here. There we go, thanks. Thank you, thanks, thanks. Beautiful. You know, Randy and I were in a, in a we were in the UK a number of years ago, Southampton, if I believe it was. And uh, we were talking uh, about, there's an offering to be taken. We were talking about offerings and we've had, uh, we, at different times, we have unusual things happen in offerings. Um, we've actually had, at the church, we've actually had money float out of the air uh, in, in the hallway, honestly, just bills just float out of the air. I know this, this, this will already increase the controversy, but it's true, it's still true. <laughs> We've, we've got gems that just appear under people's feet while they're praying, you know, I mean, just crazy stuff. But in Southampton, we prayed that the Lord would bring increase and they took the offering that was gathered in a gathering like this and from the time they left the church and got to the bank, it increased by 800 pounds. It just increased. One of the folks in our church just adopted a business to pray into and encourage the owners and, and went in one day just to see how they were doing. And, uh, and just prayed for them. And they took their deposit that week to the bank. But the, from the time they left the, the business and got to the bank, it doubled in the amount. We had one of our students, just money appeared in the bank. They went down and said, this isn't ours. And they looked at it and said, no, this is yours. They said, no, it's not mine. I, I don't have anybody to put that in there. It's $10,000, it's not mine. The bank said, it's yours. He said, it's not mine. They said, it's yours. He said, thank you very much. <laughs> so you know what <laughs> we're going to sow all the world around us says recession there's no recession in heaven we're going to sow into what God's doing here and uh, so we're going to do that together so hurry fill that out real fast and, uh, and then we're going to receive, we're gonna to stand together. And uh, in fact, why don't you stand now? If you're still writing, write fast. That, that's me, I'm gonna to have to do it when I get down there, so. Hold your gift before the Lord. If uh, you have nothing to give, grab your neighbor's wallet and give like you've always wanted to give. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's an old one, but uh, I still like it. No. <laughs> hold your phone. I think, yeah, there's a QR code you can give that way too. So hold your gift before the Lord and let's just pray together. Father, uh, first of all, I thank you for so many people that are willing to pay such a price to be impacted, that they might impact the world. I thank you, thank you, thank you for this. I thank you for bringing us together for such a time as this. And I'm asking every single person who sowed into this event, just showing up, that there would be great return. I'm praying within 60 days, there would be dramatic return to every household. 
that jobs would be spared, that there would be raises, bonuses, increases at the most unusual times. And then for the offering tonight, literally multiply it for the harvest of souls. I pray this for the honor and the glory of the name Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. Pass those, uh, those beautiful orange buckets. All right. <laughs> How many of you have never heard Randy Clark before? This, this will be a first time. Put your hands up. Oh, wow. Wow. How many of you have? Beautiful. How many of you aren't going to raise your hand no matter what I ask? That's, <laughs> there's always a few of you here. There's always a few. Randy has been, uh, in 1997, my wife and I flew back to St. Louis. A mutual friend set up a time for us to sit down with Randy. Literally, it was about a 10-minute break in between meals and meetings. And he graciously invited us to his table. We sat down, shared with him what was going on here. I think it was within six months he was here. And when he came to Reading, the miracles that were happening every week shifted to every day with dramatic, dramatic, dramatic increase. I am so personally indebted. Nobody has taught me more or continues to teach me more on the ways of the Holy Spirit and the work of God on planet Earth than this wonderful, wonderful friend. He's become a dear, dear friend to our church here, Bethel, Reading, our school, and literally to the movement all around the world. And I'm indebted absolutely forever indebted to him. And I want you to share, show your love for Randy Clark with me as we welcome Randy. It's a privilege to be here. It's always a privilege to be here. I tell our students at our schools and pre preachers all over the world, if you can't preach at Reading, you can't preach. <laughs> There's such faith, such expectancy. It's a joy. Before I begin the message, I, I do want to share a few things with you. Um, I want to give these three books away. I am going to teach tonight. There's going to be three times I'm going to teach on healing, um, three nights. And one session during the day, I'm going to teach uh, and preach on impartation. Since tonight is going to be on healing, and there's no way I could share everything I want to. I remember, I used to be frustrated when I go do to conferences and be on healing, and you get to preach two times. And I was always frustrated. There's so much to say about healing. What, which, what do I share? And everything I share, I'm thinking, well, gosh, there, that needs to be balanced with this teaching. And I remember I wanted to start healing schools. This is a healing school. This actually isn't a conference. It's a healing school. You, you just thought it was a conference. <laughs> and you're going to learn. And there's going to be teaching that's going to help you. going to be activation. There's going to be a lot of good things. Um, so I started. I said, oh, God, what do we do? And I felt like if I could have 24 sessions, six, uh, four days, six sessions a day, I could say everything I wanted to say. I'd preach half to two-thirds of them and... My friends, some other friends would come like Bill and Leif and others. And later on, our associates that we de developed, they would help me with the others. And then we did it. And then I realized, oh, there's more. <laughs> so we did another school and had another 24 sessions. And it dealt with more deliverance and other things that we didn't cover in the first one. And I said, oh, there's more. And then we did one just for like medical professionals and it dealt with the relationship between medicine and, and healing and uh, similarities of thought in some places. 
I thought, now surely we're done. And then I come across a book by Paul, Dr. Paul King, and I loved it so much called Only Believe. And uh, I called him and said, Dr. Dr. Paul King, this book is so good. I want to make a conference out of it. It's on faith and healing. And uh, he came and some others did, Joe McIntyre. And I don't know if Bill, if you were at that one or not, but Tom was. And, and, and so then we had four schools of 24 sessions each. I, I just, there's just a lot to share. So in three sessions I'm going to preach, I'm going to tell you there's so much more. And I want to tell you, here's where you can get them, some of the more. Probably this is the, one of the best-selling books that's ever been written on healing. Bill and I wrote it together. You'll notice his name is first. <laughs> the way they do that in the Bible, whoever's name is first is the more important one. <laughs> I just, you know, it was Barnabas and Saul, and then it became Saul and Barnabas. Something happened on that first trip. <laughs> the, essential, the essential guide to healing, equipping all Christians to pray for the sick. Scores of thousands have been sold. This one's going to be given away. I'd like to give it to an Episcopalian. Do we have an Episcopalian or an Anglican here? Do we have any, or an Anglican? Do we have any Anglican pastors here? If you're an Anglican pastor, you'll get preference over the Anglican. <laughs> but if there's not, then here it is. There's an Anglican pastor? In, incognito? No, okay. Come, this lady right here. I want to give them. Let me go. When people ask me, I've written about 40 books. People ask me, what's the most important books you've written on healing? I say, I, I wish I, when I first started praying for the sick and learning, I wished I could have had these two books. Power to Heal. And my cardiologist is a famous cardiologist and uh, was on the board for Reinhard Bonnke's ministry and an associate evangelist of Reinhard Bonnke. He said, Randy, when I teach for people just like they did in the healing revival, they teach during the day about healing from the scriptures so that people have more faith at night to, that come forward for healing. And when there's good teaching, there's more healing that takes place. And he said, this is the book I use. This is a modern day classic. So I would encourage you, if you want to learn more than what I'm going to be able to share, this would be helpful. This would be helpful, the healing breakthrough. What I did here is I take what I do in a usual healing meeting and I explain it, and then I explain why I do it. And I think um, out of all I learned from all the different people I've met, all the people's stories I've read, their biographies and books about healing and the famous healing evangelists I've met in other countries and what the Lord has taught me in the last 52 years of being in ministry, um, I put it in here about healing. So I'd like to give this one to a Presbyterian Reformed or Baptist pastor. <laughs> it looks like they've all ceased. No, no, there'd be a bunch of us. If I said former Baptist, there'd be a bunch of us raise our hands. So that's no fun. Uh, okay, Methodist. Do we have a Methodist pastor? You missed the pastor? Okay, you ready? Can you catch? One of the most exciting things I'm seeing lately is God moving powerfully in the Roman Catholic Church. I'd like to give this. Do we have any Roman Catholic priest here? If you're a Roman Catholic priest, raise your hand. You're welcome. I mentioned in the school today, or yesterday, while I was in Brazil this last time, I got a, a, a as a woman in our, on our team, we had a, quite a few uh, Roman Catholics on our team, and, and, and uh, she said, have you heard what's happening in the Bronx, New York, with Father George? 
I said, I've never heard of Father George. I don't know Father George. No, I haven't heard. What's going on? Well, he went to your Voice of the Apostles Conference in Columbus, Ohio this year, and your team prayed for him. He'd been in a ministry for 20, uh, ordained priest for 27 years, but he hadn't seen hardly any healings. After he went home to the Bronx, New York, to a a parish that's 100% African-American and Hispanic, healing broke out. All types of healing started happening. He got so excited that he decided, I'm going to have a special mass on three, at 3 p.m. on a certain, I think it was a Saturday. He told me, I actually got a hold of him just a few days ago. I, I, I said, I'm going to record this. He said, okay. I said, all right. Could you tell me what's been going on? I think that's the last thing I got to say for the next hour. <laughs> as he is rattling off all the healings and all the miracles. And I was in tears. And he said that healing mass that started at 3 p.m. got over at 10 something p.m. And almost everybody that came were healed. People, deliverances are taking place. And then he said, Randy, I've been a priest 27 years. I'd never seen this. I never heard about it. But there were people outside lined up to get into the confession, confessional, confessional. And uh, three in a row, they came into the confession. They start to confess their sins. I start to do absolution. And they get filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and they fall out in the box, in the confessional. And there's other people outside, and they're listening to it. And all types of noises. God is up to something. And it's not in Brazil this time. It's in the Bronx, New York. <laughs> so uh, I'll, every, every time I preach, I'm going to give books away. How many of you would like to have a free, something free book for me? Raise your hand. Everybody's got your hand up. I'm going to call you on it. Get your phone out right now. Because if you'll type in and do a search for Randy Clark 13.academia.edu, it it's, going to, it's going to come up to my profile. And there'll be four words under it. And if you click, this is important, you got to click on the word research that will take you to my research. There's a free book there that we, well, there's my dissertation. We used to sell it for $50. It's going to be free. It's one of the best things you can read to refute both cessationism and liberalism. Parts, four books I've written come out of the dissertation. And then there's other things there that I didn't put in. It'll be helpful, very helpful to you. Secondly, there's a book called Healing Energy. Whose is it? Somewhere between $15, $19. It's out there on the table. You can go out there and buy it. I'd love it if you did. Or you can just click here and get it free. There's a statement from Michael Brown and Joseph Mater and many other people, myself included, um, that is a response to the uh, people talking about NAR, NAR, in a real negative way. And it's our response to what those who are accused of being in AR, myself included, which I don't think I am, uh, only because it really emphasizes a belief in the restoration of the apostolic and prophetic offices. I don't believe you can restore something that's not gone. It's my, it's my view that the functions continued from the very beginning to this day and there's always been apostolic people and prophetic people, but there were times because of doctrines that arose in the church, like cessationism amongst Protestants, that it was not correct to use those terms or talk about those offices, but those functions were still here. I believe that Wesley was apostolic. I believe that Booth, William Booth, was apostolic. There are so many people I could name off, Zinzendorf, so many people that were apostolic. Luther, I, I prove it in another thing, a response. I have an almost 200-page response uh, to 
Holly Pivick and uh, Doug Guyvett in, in uh, their book, uh, critical book. Um, and I, I have shared with them in person some of these things, but that's free. The first 60 pages I wrote and the rest of it was written by students of our seminary. Uh, some of the best papers that were written as we studied on um, um, renewal theology. And uh, one of the things I really would like for you to have is to see that in the part I wrote, I prove that Calvin himself believed that there could be the restoration of prophets and apostles at any time the church goes into an area where there is no church established. God can re could, and he believed that he did, and he had renewed those offices. But as soon as the church was established, then they would end again. That was his view, but they could happen. A lot of reform don't talk about that. But Calvin, I, I actually show you in the book from his institutes where he says so. Calvin even considered himself a son of Luther and called Martin Luther a distinguished apostle. I'm just helping with a little bit of church history and also from Scripture. So it, there's, a, there's a lot. There's a lot there, and it's going to be an ongoing gift to you because as we get more and more things that's being written by students of our seminary and professors of our seminary, we're going to keep adding these apologetics, defense of what we believe. And if you want to know what we believe, you should ask us rather than people who tell you what we believe. <laughs> so anyway, all you have to do is type it in three and get a bunch of stuff. And like I said, it'd be a gift that keeps on giving. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of the ways of God. And I think this is extremely important. A lot of understanding and seeing more healing is dependent upon your being able to know what God wants to do in that service. Revelatory gifts, and some people say you shouldn't use the word revelation, that's only for the scripture, special revelation. I agree, special revelation only talks about the scripture. General revelation is God speaks to us in our conscience and in nature. This is very common in almost any theological book you'll read. But there's also a third category that's seldom referred to, and I call it specific revelation. And that's where God tells you specifics that you need to know for your life. When he calls you, where he calls you to, when he tells you what message to preach, when he gives you insights of this person that there's, there's a word that you need to say to them that will help them that's not special revelation. It's never meant to be for all and everybody like the Bible is. It's not general revelation, but it is specific revelation. And the special revelation of the Word of God gives many times that God uses specific revelations through dreams and visions and timing for the people they discern that God was leading them in this way. Though we have the Bible... And it is sufficient for our, our doctrine and practices. The Bible itself tells us that the early church was also influenced and led by specific revelation for specific situations. More so than the denominational tag we wear or the number of letters behind our names or the schools we went to, more importantly is the simplicity of intimacy with Jesus Christ where we lean close to his breast and we hear him whisper because he did say, my sheep, hear my voice. God is not a God that only has an ear to listen to our prayers because prayer is to be a two-way dialogue. We speak and we believe that God is listening but the scriptures tells that prayers more than that. It's more than our speaking that he listens, but then we listen and he speaks back. A still small voice. And in that place 
of intimacy, he often will reveal what he wants to do. And I want to talk to you tonight about how are some of the ways of God, some of the ways that God creates faith in us. Some of the ways that God does things to create a greater measure of faith, that's our faith, our measure of faith. And some of the ways that he creates the gift of faith. And the gift of faith, there is no doubt at all. Because it's not your faith. You didn't create it. God did something that was so clear. He created in you a belief that's so strong. You just say, I know this is going to happen. I, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. But it, ha it happens a lot less for the people who have discerned the different ways that God speaks. I went from 19 years of being a, pa being a pastor, 17 being ordained, and had seen five healings, to doing a four-day conference in my own Baptist church that Blaine Cook and some three other lay people from the vineyard came, and Blaine did almost all the teaching. But what he was teaching was, here's how to recognize the way God leads. Here's how to know if you're getting a word of knowledge. Here's how to hear from God. And after that, we had 50 healings, five in 19 years, four days, we have 50. And after that, I and a majority, many of the people of my church began to see healing on a regular basis. What changed? The will of God, the sovereignty of God, or an understanding of the ways of God? Yeah. It was the understanding of the ways of God. So I want to share some of those with you. I want, I want us to turn to um, Exodus chapter 33. It's one of my favorite a passage of scripture. And, and in verse 13, well, I want to back up. Verse 12. Now, this is the issue where Moses, is, God told Moses, I'm not going to go with you. I'm going to send an angel with you, but I'm not going to go unless, unless I break out because of the disbelief, unbelief, and sin that was happening in the camp. And, and Moses said, listen, if you don't go, I don't want to go up without you. I mean, the presence of God was so important to Moses. Later on, he said, if you don't go with it, and if there's not any signs and wonders, what's going to make us any different from all the other people of the world? So in this passage, in verse 12, starting there, Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. That's what God said to Moses. Moses is now saying, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Other translations say, show me your ways. So I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. I love this where he says, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Sometimes we say, Lord, give me miracles. Lord, give me healings. Lord, give me direction. But in this one prayer, you get all the other. Lord, teach me your ways. For in the coming to understand the ways of God better, we will see all that other stuff because it happens through understanding the different ways God speaks, including and especially through his word, the Bible, which shows us not just doctrines, but shows us how God works with his people, how they learn to follow him, the mistakes they made. I, I loved it when Wimber's talking from the Gospels, just how he was always amazed, and Bill's a lot like this too, with how the disciples were slow to catch on <laughs> to the ways of God. And yet God just continued to use them. I, I remember one of the first times I heard, I think it was Bill, 
rather than John Wimber. But anyway, you know, he's, he's talking about sending out the 12 and they've gone out on their mission. And, and one, of the, one of the times, um, James and John, the sons of thunder, which means they had bad tempers and could boil up real quick. <laughs> And, 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 and John later on in life, he's called the apostle of love. You talk about moral transformation. You talk about the presence making a difference in him. This son of thunder becomes the apostle of love. Anyway, they went to the Samaritans. The Samaritans didn't want to receive them. And they, they, met, they met with Jesus. Jesus, it's in the Bible. No, I'm adding that part. But he could have said, they could, it's in the Bible, Elijah. They didn't receive him. He called down fire and burned them up. He also called down bears on them and, you know, and ate them up. But uh, can we do that? Let's do that. God, Jesus, mm, call down fire, burn them up. Remember, I, I remember you teaching this. I, I, you're a good teacher. <laughs> and what does Jesus do? Oh, this is working well. Let's lay hands now on 70 more and send them out. We would have said, you need two more years of training before you do anything else. He trusted the Holy Spirit would work with them and teach them. He trusted that one day after he died and ascended and he from the Father would send the Spirit in one quick moment of transformation by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there was going to be a change in those fearful, sometimes dull disciples to become sensitive to his leading and be used to turn the world upside down. So this is very important, this show me your ways. Show me your ways. If, I, if you're pleased with me, teach me your ways. This is important. So I may know you. People say, I'm not after God's hand. I'm not really wanting power or miracles or healing I'm after his face but I love it the Eastern Orthodox they teach that the gifts of God are more than just gifts they are the actual presence the the energy of God coming to us so it's so much more intimate if you have that Eastern way of understanding the gifts of God it's not just an empowerment it's not just a gift so to speak but it's God himself in his energy that is the way you know and why you have power because he's working with you. If, I've, if, if you're pleased with me, show me your ways that I may know you. Did you know that God, I'd, I found out in 1984 in March that God had been speaking to me a lot and I didn't give him credit for it. I didn't get excited about it. And I didn't act on it because I didn't even know that was God. And once I learned that that had already been happened because I was a Christian, I did have the spirit in me. I may not have yet been baptized with the spirit. By the way, you can move in some gifts before you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. It just kind of supercharges once you are. Uh, because the spirit of God is in you and he has all the gifts. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not a Christian. So it's a really bad question to ask somebody, do you have the Spirit? If you want to say, have you been filled with the Spirit? That's different. If you want to say, uh, and that'd be a really good way of saying it. But he's, but he's saying, so that I may know you. When we begin to realize, oh, I remember one time Bill and I were doing a meeting together. We, some people came up, there had been a word of knowledge about a certain knee. And the first two or three people in a row had that condition. I'm oblivious. I don't make the connection. But Bill did. And he said, this is unusual. First three in a row, they got the same word of knowledge. I want everybody that's here has got a problem in that knee. Stand up, God's going to heal. And I'm thinking, how do you know that? And he began to teach me about these timings, these unusual situations that God begins to work in them. Learning the ways of God is an ongoing process. I've been in ministry 52 years. I'm still learning the ways of God. And the more we learn, 
the more we see and the more faith we have. And we become aware of how often he does draw near. It is our hope, my hope this week, when you leave, you will be more aware of the ways of God and you will be more aware of his communications. And as you become more aware, you will have more faith so that I may know you and continue to find favor in your sight. That's all good. Isn't that all good? Why is it important to know the ways of God? There's three reasons. And they're still valuable. At the end of the same chapter, and I'm not going to preach on this at all, I just want to make an observation. At the end of this chapter, after it's resolved that God is going to go with them, Moses then prays another prayer and says, now show me your glory. I would like to posit this insight. When you know more about the ways of God, you will end up seeing more of the glory of God. Because glory is a word that in the Hebrew and in the Greek in the Old and New Testaments, it's often associated. The number one way God glorifies his name is through what he does, his signs, his wonders, especially the pillar of cloud in the day and the fire, a pillar of fire in the cloud. Those two in the Old Testament are the main ways it's connected with God revealing his glory and the people seeing the glory of God. Now, there's a lot of other ways, but those are by far the most. In the New Testament, the way God manifests his glory or shows his glory is through what he does in his signs and his wonders. So if we're saying, oh, I, I, don't, I think you guys are just focused on yourselves. It, you ought to be concerned about God. Yes, and God's glory. And when we want to be used of God and we see things happen in our services that can't happen unless God shows up, he gets glory. When, Peter, when Jesus turned the water into wine in John 2, it says, he, this was the first of miracles that Jesus, first of the signs that Jesus performed in Canaan and Galilee when he turned the water into wine and thus revealed his glory. The, both John, the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul will use the word glory and power synonymously. Paul will write in his epistles in, within a few verses of each other, raised by the power of God, raised by the glory of God. When we sing that wonderful song, Glorify thy name, glorify thy name, glorify thy name in all the earth. We need to understand when we pray that, the, num the biblical way that God does that is through the demonstrations of his power, through his gifts, through his miracles, through healing and miracles. It's very unbiblical to say, I want to see God's name glorified and then to say, well, I don't believe he does those things anymore. Yes. How's he going to glorify his name biblically the way he always did the most? Anyway, I mean, I'm chasing a rabbit. Shoot it. All right, now we're going to start on the message. <laughs> what are ways... Some of the ways, this is not definitive, it's not exhaustive. These are just some I felt like God put on my heart tonight. I hope this turns out all right. I've never preached this message like this before. And um, I feel like God gave me some direction during the worship. And I, I like it when he get, I get it before worship, but today I got it during worship. It's, anyway, how do we know the ways of God? How does God reveal, show, teach his ways? What are some of the ways God works? Number one, he reveals his ways through his son. Jesus was the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity, the son of God. Co-equal with the father and the spirit. And he became the model for us to know what the father was like. He modeled for us the nature of God. And so our religion of Christianity 
founded on the Christ, the anointed one, the son of God, he reveals. And often he healed all that came to him. We see it in a lot of places. In, in Luke, it, it says he, he, was, he healed all that were coming to him. And this was done so it might fulfill that which spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. From Isaiah 53, Jesus was the model. He revealed to us ways. He was a way himself. And so as we study the Bible, watch and look at Jesus' life, we see the heart of God and the will of God. When the leper said to him, bowed before him and begged him, if you are willing, you can make me clean, he reaches out and touches the leper and says, I am willing, be clean. Another way that God reveals or we can learn the ways of God is that acts of obedience is a way God heals. He responds to faith that is expressed through acts of obedience. In Brazil, 100% of the people that have been healed of metal were not healed when I prayed for them. They were healed when they tried to do what they couldn't do. In the moment they tried to act, and one of the things was I felt like the Lord said, tell them they have to try to do. Once they stand up, I pray, now try to do what you can't do. That's when the healings came. Part of it, I believe, not, not putting God in a box, but it was one of the things that he had said, that he wanted to hold them responsible, that they don't sit there and wait passively to feel fire, to feel heat, to feel electricity. But by faith, they act on the word that he had given to us, that he wants them to do that. Now, if he hadn't have said that, that'd change things. <laughs> but when he speaks, he does want us to obey as a sign of faith these acts of obedience I, I, I think about it in John's gospel but it talks about more than any other gospel the connection between signs and wonders and faith these things are written so that you may believe and after many of the signs and the seven signs in John's gospel said and they believed and they put their faith and they said, this must be sure, this surely is the prophet, one of the messianic titles for the Messiah that is to come. Then in John's gospel, you see a connection between coming into faith and seeing the miracle. But you also see a connection in John's gospel between Jesus telling them to do something and when they did it, it released his power for healing. I was thinking about it when he said, fill up these pots with water. If no one had filled up the pots, we would not have had the miracle of Cana. Right. Oh. Two times in John's gospel, they have caught nothing all night. And he says, now throw your net on the other side and you'll find some. And both times they did it, they obeyed. And when they obeyed, their nets were so full, they were ripping apart. They needed help to pull them in. The second time when that happened, Peter realized, oh, this is the Lord. If there had been no obedience to throw your nets on the other side, they would have not caught any fish that night. You can say, but God, he is big enough that he doesn't have to have you throw your net on the other side. If he wants to, he can cause nets to go in your net, fish on, cause fish to go in your net on this side. Yes, that's true. But there's a difference between the philosophical question of what God can do and the relational question of what God has expressed he wants to do. There's a huge difference. And when you say, oh God, he could do anything he wants, but he wants to involve you. Then he wants to involve me and he wants us to develop a relationship that we know him better and learn how to hear his communications recognize his communications perceive what he wants to do if there if the blind man had not been willing to go to the pool and wash there had been no verse that said 
And after he had washed, then he could see. There would have been no, then he could see. There'd been no, I mean, John chapter nine, had there not been the obedience to the word. There are times that what keeps us from receiving what God wants to give us is looking for an act of faith expressed in obedience. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. He wants faith to be expressed in obedience. If a man whose son was near death, who pleaded with Jesus several times to come down to my home, if he had not taken Jesus at his word and obeyed it, his son may have died. But instead, when Jesus said, I'm not coming, sorry, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> you go home. And it says he took Jesus at his word. And on his way home, he met the people coming from his servants from his home, and they told him that his son was recovering. And as he inquired more, he discovered it was that very same hour that Jesus said, you go home. The man had asked Jesus to come to his home. That's where Jesus healed a lot of people, healed them, raised them from the dead in their homes. He did go with a lot of people to their home. But there's sometimes he says, no, you go. Your son will live. He took him in his word. That was an act of obedience. Tonight, I believe there's going to be some things the Holy Spirit may say to you you need to do. If you get that impression, you need to do it. Now, he won't ask you to do anything to be contrary to the principles of Scripture. So if that comes, you know you're not hearing from God. But he may ask you to do things that doesn't make sense. The first time I preached from a sermon like um, what I'm talking about, these illustrations, was right here at the, actually at the church in Reading. The first time I preached it. And I remembered I had an illustration for all the seven signs in John's gospel except the first one. I said, well, six out of seven, that's good. I don't need an illustration for the first one. And as I was preaching this message, I saw a mental picture in my head of people doing this. And I, I said, God, what is that? And I had an impression. I didn't hear an audible voice. I had an impression. And it was this, tell people that I want to heal any problem from their mouth to their anus. Now, I didn't say that that night because I was, I said just anywhere in your whole digestive system. <laughs> but that's really what the Holy Spirit said. But, and I said, well, God, how? He said, tell them that they're supposed to do this. I said, Lord, how long? Sometimes he got the people out of Egypt, but he let Moses organize the parade. Sometimes he doesn't tell us. Sometimes he lets us make a decision. At that time, I was probably 20 years or more younger than I am now, and I thought it needs to be long enough that we feel stupid but not so long that we pass out. <laughs> so I, I think I said, two minutes. Anybody that you have a digestive problem of any kind, God wants to heal you and this is what you're going to do. You're going to do this <laughs> for two minutes. I looked on my watch to make sure it's two minutes. I want to be a perfect obedience. I want to fill the pot to the brim. <laughs> but at that time, my grandfather, when I was 16, died of colon cancer. And I had been bleeding from the colon pretty seriously, and I was nervous. And I remember that night, I remember underneath my breath, I said to God, God, I'm getting in on this one myself. And then I remembered the passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the last verse that says, let everything be done decently and in order. So I said, I want you all that, and I was expecting 20, I was expecting, really, I was expecting about 20 people to come up. I said, if you have a digestive problem and need healing, I want you to come up, line up here. Yeah, um, it, 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 if there's more than one line, then go back seven feet and form a second line. Because I didn't want, you know, somebody to do this <laughs> and hit the person here that's in front of them in the line. That wouldn't have been decent. That wouldn't have been an order.
My friend Larry Randolph told me once we were in California, the assembly got, I mean, a church got in Cleveland. He said, you know, Randy, I would just like to be in a meeting where we need that verse. Think about it. Anyway, I was shocked. 20 people didn't come up. 200 did. If you would have walked into Reading Bethel Church that night at about 9 o'clock, you would have seen 200 people in the front of the church, all of them standing up like the coast. I saw that little yellow bird with the red pick, you know, going in, in the back of the cars, going into the bottle like that. You would have seen 200 of us doing this. And you may say, what does that have to do with healing? That's the point, nothing. If it makes sense, if there's a natural reason why that's gonna bring the healing, then it's not supernatural, it's just a natural. But I remember, Bill, I don't know if you remember or not, the, 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 the reception said, the anonymity of people, because they had to eat before they could find out if it worked or not, the anonymity of being able to just call in and tell what they'd been healed of released a lot of freedom for testimonies that normally wouldn't be given in church. Like the woman who'd had hemorrhoids for 50 years and woke up, they were gone the next day. All types of food allergies, all types of digestive problems. I mean, there were so many healings. You could say, that was a weird, that was a good illustration. You may think, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. But if the person ministering is really hearing from God, you're not disobeying, you're not, re you're not being stubborn to me if I am hearing from the Lord. It, you got you. I got healed. Thank you for reminding me. I never had any more blood after that night. Thank you. I forgot. I got healed. Thank you, Lord. So we see that God shows us this way by pointing us to Jesus. By acts of obedience, we learn his ways. We learn his ways by understanding the healing that Jesus bore in his body. And Isaiah 53, by his stripes we're healed, and in his body he bore our sickness and our diseases. In the same way, same Hebrew verb, that it says he bore our sins and our trespasses. But we also see that one of his ways is creating faith by his servants, his ministers, whether they're ordained or lay, declaring what he reveals to them. New age religion says you create your reality by your words but you are a free agent. You're totally independent. It's whatever you're saying. That's not Christianity. And Christianity teaches that when we are making a declaration, it has power when we have heard from him. And when we have heard from him and declare what he wants to do, there's power. We're not independent agents. We are dependent upon the Lord. He's the Lord. He's the one. And we must hear. And if we miss, he's gracious. If we miss, but we thought we were hearing God, he's still excited about it. Your obedience. And he knows you thought you heard. If you keep on trying to obey, you'll get better at hearing Faith is created by declaration. In um, 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul's quoting David, and he says, as it is written, we believed, therefore we have spoken. That's the end of the quote. And then he goes ahead to write. And in that same spirit of faith, we too believe, and therefore we speak. The Lord taught me this one on the way from a big Baptist church, the, the hotel, to this big Baptist church. Quoted, brought that scripture to my mind. I'm trying to figure out what it means. It was like all of a sudden I got it. And it was like Holy Spirit was saying to me, not in an audible voice, but just in a still small whisper of an impression. 
if you believe, I'm going to do something. And if you really believe this is God, that I want to do this, then say it out loud in front of the crowd. Because if it is me in that declaration, many people will be brought to jo into joining you in that expectation. You can believe it, but if you don't say it, it doesn't have that effect of bringing people from where they're expecting into joining you in what you're expecting. When, so it's not that we can say whatever we want. I remember a few months, uh, several months ago, I was in a, uh, one of our bigger conferences in, in Virginia. And I, I'm, I want to be a learner. I, I don't want, you never stop risking, <clears throat> but you can be, do it humbly. So I'm, I'm going down praying for people. And not everybody, I'm praying for everybody, but I'm not saying words to everybody. And this, I got to this one guy, he's a big black guy, and he's about 6'4", something like that. And I was sitting there in front of him, I feel like God wants me to say something to him, but I don't know what it is yet, I'm just listening. And I think, well, God, that, I don't understand that. That, how, what, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't have to make sense to you. So much of the time, you don't understand it until they tell you. you sometimes you say, but what does that mean to you? So I, I said to this guy, what does the number nine <laughs> mean to you? And I, I don't, I said number nine, not like German nine for no, but nine, the number nine. <laughs> what does that mean? And I'm thinking, it, I, I missed it. This isn't God. It's not going to mean anything. And this great big guy just starts tears running down his face. And I realized it meant something. <laughs> Now I'm curious, well, tell me what that mean? Because I don't know. He said, I gave my life to the Lord when I was nine. It's reminding me of that first love. I felt really good. Oh, wow, I heard, I heard from God. I went around the corner and I see this Caucasian guy. I feel like oh, I should need to say something to him too. And it's about six people later. And I'm looking at him, waiting, God, show me what you want to say. And I said, you know, and I said to both of them, you know, this, if this is God, it makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it's not God. It's just me missing God, but I'm trying to hear for you. And I'm not perfect. So I, I, I think there was a time in your life you felt much closer to God than you do right now. And God wants to renew your first love. And I've given some more words and, and I stopped and said, well, what, was any of that right? What, any of it wrong? And he looked at me in front of a whole bunch of people and said, it's all wrong. <laughs> I'm just letting you see that this is not like you're perfect and you never miss, but you need to use humility because if you don't use humility, if you try to cover up your insecurity, it says, thus saith the Lord God. And then you say it, it's going to be hard for the guy to say, yeah, you were wrong. <laughs> After you used the thus saith the Lord part. <laughs> also, that was good for me because if I had too many of those in a row, I could begin to think I was better than what I was. <laughs> we could begin to become spiritually proud. Every once in a while, a little humiliation is good for your humility. <laughs> the ways of God... There's a relationship to, that do we understand there's a relationship between revelation, or if you don't like that word, illumination. But Paul in the scripture prays that we'll have a revelation, unless you can say, well, that only, that prayer from Paul only worked till the scripture was canonized, and that verse doesn't mean anything anymore. It's invalid anymore because now we have the Bible. Or you can say, Paul knew what he was praying. He prayed that we'd have a revelation of God's love. We'd have a revelation. It's a biblical word. So there is a connection between revelation, a revealing what God wants to do, often a word of knowledge or prophecy or understanding timing, but he reveals some way what he wants to do. And that then, that revelatory gift quickens 
either increases your measure of faith or quickens the gift of faith, as I said earlier. But here's the other part. And that then releases the gifts of miracles. I've never seen a miracle take place, the working of miracles, where there wasn't a gift of faith. God gave the gift. God created it by what he did. But if we never understood, something can be so clear. I remember one time my intern, uh, Marcus, um, Digert was with me and we were in a four square church in Brazil and um, a quadrangular church and a few months before he had said I see a, a, a woman I, I see a person no wait a minute, let's start over he said I see a red helmet with a black face shield with white scratches on the top of the head and when he said that over on the left were a bunch of four square pastors and this woman pastor stood up immediately weeping and started walking toward Marcus. And by the time she gets to him, she's already healed. But many years ago, riding on a motorcycle, she was wearing a red helmet with a black face shield. She had a wreck, landed on the top of her head, and it's, the helmet she still had had all these white scratches across. She knew, that's me. That word was so specific, it created in her. Now, she's a pastor. She's a Pentecostal pastor. She had been prayed for many, many, many times because she has this really bad spinal injury that hurts and had never been healed. But in that word of knowledge, it released the gift of faith. And the gift of faith brought her healing without anybody laying hands on her, touching her, or praying for her. By the time just walking that distance, she's already healed. She knew it was going to be for her. There are, I'm, going to let the, I'm not going to kill that rabbit, but I just want to say every time I've had a gift of faith, it's been because of a specific word of knowledge that was so clear, I knew exactly what God was wanting to do, and I had absolutely no faith, no, no doubt, but total faith that it's going to happen. My measure of faith never comes up to that place. I can see healings by my measure of faith. But I see miracles by the gift of faith. And it is connected to knowing his ways. And it, it's not like God has not been wanting to speak to you. I know even probably from, for, if you're new to this, I, I'm saying it's not like God hasn't been speaking, but you haven't understood his ways. We're going to help you understand the ways of God. We can't teach you how to heal, but we can teach you the ways of God. We can't teach you how to heal, but we can teach you how you can come into faith by understanding the working of the Holy Spirit. God is the one who heals, but he looks for partners that he wants to use. Another way that we can see in the ways of God is modeled by the Apostle Paul. In Romans chapter 15, in verses uh, 17 through 19. Romans chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said. Paul was an evangelical. And done. He was also Pentecostal. <laughs> by the power of signs and miracles. Through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Lycrium, I have fully, the word proclaimed is not actually in the Greek. It's a word that means I have fulfilled the gospel. Or I filled up the whole area from Lycrium to Jerusalem. I have filled it up with the gospel. The word proclaimed was added to try to make sense out of it. For those that thought that the only way that the gospel can be seen is through words and through preaching. Wesley sometimes said, if you need to preach, then do so. But we live out our faith, not just with words, but by our, by our lives. This is a model. Signs and wonders would be a very much a part of the gospel of the kingdom. But it's not by us, and we can't teach you how to heal. But we can teach you that the only power to heal comes from God. But God wants to wear you like a glove. 
You see, it's not just, a, it's not really a person trying to be humble when they prayed and somebody got healed and somebody says, you healed them. And he said, no, no, I didn't heal them. God did it. That's not really being falsely humble. That's really the truth. Because you pray for enough people that don't get healed to know what you can do. So when one does get healed, you know somebody else showed up. <laughs> and in all seriousness, I want to say this. Jesus is our model. He was God, totally God. He added to his deity humanity. By him adding his, to his deity humanity in the incarnation becoming flesh, Humanity and deity was in the same person. But because of what he did, he who was God that added humanity to his deity now made it possible for us humans to add deity to our humanity. It's called being filled with the Spirit. The Spirit is God. You carry God. God is in you. So Paul said, we labor with all his energy that works so mightily within us. He talks about Christ in you, the anointing in you is the hope of glory. Some of us just don't know who we are. We don't know, not only do we not know who God is in us, we don't know who we are in God. And our job is to try to teach the word and help people come to understand who they are. Another way is testimonies. God creates faith through the power of the testimony. This is one of the greatest ways, you see it in the Bible. Uh, we see it in Luke 6, 17 through 19 that Everybody was trying to touch Jesus because power was coming out of him and healing them all. I'm convinced that the woman who had the issue of blood, she heard that story, and that's what gave her the idea, I need to touch. If I can only touch the hem of his garment, if I can only touch the edge of his cloak. And she explained why she had done what she did and how she had been healed in Luke 8, 42 through 54. See a parallel in, Mark, in Matthew 9, 21 and 22 where she's explained why she did it. And in these stories by Matthew and Luke, he's, they both are very specific to include in the details of the story that she touched the edge of his cloak. In Matthew chapter 14, the last two verses of the chapter, I think it's 34 through, or three verses, 34 through 36, it says they realized it's Jesus and they sent people, went throughout all the region, the Gadarenes, and they brought to Jesus all of the sick and they laid them before him and they said, and they begged Jesus, just let them touch the edge of your cloak. That's not the normal way Jesus healed. Normally, he spoke it or he laid hands on them. Rather than them laying hands on him, he laid hands on them. That's the normal way. That's the majority of the ways that he did it. Or he gave them an act of obedience to do. This one woman, the issue of blood, is the, it's told in different gospels, but it's the same story. I believe the people of the Gadarenes heard her testimony. And that's why they begged him. And it's not superstitious faith. It's that's the way faith happens. If he did it like that, I believe he could do it again. Sad when you read some of the commentaries, they, they, they don't like this story because they don't understand the power of the testimony. Friday night, Dina Shoemaker is going to give her testimony. I want to ask Dina to stand up because she has a powerful anointing to pray for healing. Some of you may want her to pray for you. I want you to be encouraged because Friday night I'm going to preach. The whole sermon is going to be in the power of testimony. Last night, we had 104 people, and, and they had more than that, but not everybody that was on the ministry team actually went and told the person they're supposed to that, that the number of people they prayed for got healed. So we had at least 104 just in the meeting. I'm expecting tonight I'll make a declaration. I, I just believe tonight that... 
If we have a good, pretty good service, we'll have a couple of hundred people, a couple of hundred healings. If you have three things you get healed of tonight, you need it when you, stand, you raise your hand, three. I had three healings. That's three, okay? If you get healed like Pat Box's wife did when we first went to Tom Jones's church, I had only four people on our team and we gave words of knowledge and his wife on the front row stood up 11 times. I remember saying to her, God must really love you. And she got, she'd been in a terrible car accident and had a lot of stuff wrong with her. She got healed of all of them. She didn't know we would be open to what happened to her that night. She waited a couple of years or more before she ever told us. I said, well, what was it? What happened? She, says, she said, you had 11 of my conditions. She called them out. And I got healed of every one of them. Of course, she stood up every time. She said, but that night an angel came in my room and told me they missed one. Your detached retina, and I've come to heal it. So I'm in a moment, just for the guys that's running the video, I hope it works. If it doesn't work, I'm in trouble. Uh, I hope it works better than the IMT trip video. But I want to try to explain, because the first part is only in Portuguese, and I'm just going to explain, because you can tell by the motion. I just need to give a context. The rest of it will be in, explained with, in English as well. Um, there's a, a man that has a, had both legs cut off and he couldn't walk without calipers because he's in so much pain ever since he'd been hit by I don't know if it was a bus, something run into him and cut his legs off, one way up here and one here. And when he first started walking, I could tell one of them was a prosthetic. And, and I, I'm saying, the crowd doesn't understand how big of a miracle this is. That guy, he doesn't even have a leg. He's got a prosthetic. And, and then he actually rose up his pant leg and he got two prosthetics, you know. And he's walking. So I want you to know, a guy prayed for him and he was in so much pain, he couldn't walk without the calipers. The pain leaves. He's had that pain, I think it was over 15 years. One of the other illustrations, which I can't think of now what it is. I wish I could remember that first one. But anyway, I'll try to explain it when it, so leave me up in the mic and so I can tell the people what's happening and I'll tell you to uh, turn it up louder. You're gonna see this week Blind eyes healed. Tonight, you're going to see deaf ears from birth, both ears from birth opened, and you actually get to see it happening. Now, I do need to explain that one before we get into it because I don't want to mess it up. It's much more powerful than it looks. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, this mic this woman has does not go to the sound system. It only goes to the camera. And as I'm trying to see if this woman, this, little, this young teenager, if she's starting to hear, and I back up, it's a directional mic. So she turns the mic toward my, and it sounds like, oh, he's, he's speaking just as loud as he was a while ago. I mean, it's, he must be speaking louder, I can hear. It. it didn't go down. And then she begins to follow me with that mic. It's only when we get toward the end of it that she can't follow me up on the stage in the last few parts. You, you really see what a miracle it was. Charity was really close to her. Charity told me, Randy, when you were at the farthest, I was, I was from, at least from here to the sign there, the, the sound booth from her. And Charity said, I could barely hear you. And it's also pretty loud in there. And she heard. And her mother can't take it anymore. Just runs over and starts hugging her. So I wanted to explain when you see this, it's, it's actually better than what it looks. Oh, I know. The first person, this is so amazing. There's about metal. She had metal. A lot of people are going to get healed of metal this week. She had these, you can see, and I thank God she had those pants, the, the, the jeans that's got holes in the knees. Because you can see the scar like this. And you can see where there where had been pins uh, put in. And... She couldn't kneel. 
I'm praying for her because she had metal and I'm praying for people who had metal and she'd come up on stage and several of them did. And they'd been like 30 or some odd had already been healed of metal. And she said, I said, is there anything you can test this with? Yeah, I can't kneel because I can, just to, just to touch my knee over my kneecaps, I can feel the metal and it hurts to touch it. For me to kneel, it's excruciating. I can't, I have to stand up. So we're gonna start with her. You won't need any explanation. But I wanna tell you what happened after what you see her do. I said, God just healed you. You got faith for it now. This guy right behind you has got the same problem. I'm not gonna pray for him, you are. And the moment she started to pray for him, he got the same healing. He was able to kneel, no pain. And so the rest of them, you'll be able to hear the translation. Uh, so let's roll it. Oh, wait, don't yet. I forgot I, something really, really, really important. I gotta tell you this. As you watch this video, some of you are gonna be healed. It will create faith. And as you watch the video, some of you are gonna be healed. Some of you will start moving because you've got expectation, checking things out. Some of you afterwards will get up and try to do it. You're gonna be healed. That's why did I have to say, why? you say, well, why'd you have to interrupt and say that? Because I found out when I say that, because I'm expecting that, because I see it all the time. Uh, almost 100% of the time, people get healed watching videos, not just this one, but others. But then one day I forgot, I forgot to tell them they're going, they can get healed. I showed the same video that I showed in many churches when pe always people got healed. That time, nobody got healed. And I'm thinking, what's the difference? I didn't share with them they could be healed watching it. So they weren't expecting a healing. I didn't bring them into what I was expecting. So that's why it's very important to declare and in that same spirit of faith, we too speak, believe, and therefore we speak. Okay, now we can show it. <laughs> Please work. That's thank you, obrigado. Thank you. And if you look to your right, you'll see the calipers, the guy in the light blue shirt, he's holding that guy's calipers. They're like crutches that go on here. The main thing is not how good he walks, but the fact he's not in pain. This guy was up in the balcony over there. He had had a surgery, had a problem with his shoulder, tried to have it fixed by surgery, and he inadvertently cut a nerve in two that made it impossible for him to make these. The movement he's gonna show you, none of them were possible. He could not do that. 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 Not only did he have movement, but all the pain was gone. Okay. Tem alguém ali com um tumor na região do ventre. One of them said that someone there had a can had cancer in in the, the same area I had cancer. E aí eu fui para frente. So then I went to the front. 
E o João Vitor, é, tradutor, me introduziu ao apóstolo Randy Clark para orar. Me to Randy Clark to pray for me. E Randy Clark colocou a mão no meu so, ventre Randy, e nos meus rins. E orou pedindo and cura. And then prayed for healing. Eu senti um calor muito grande. I felt heat, a lot of heat. E eu acabei caindo para trás. <laughs> E eu falei assim, se eu fosse curado, said, healed, eu teria esse exame para fazer a contraprova a, a, a exam, a test, dia 19 de setembro, cinco dias depois. Later, 19, e se eu fosse curado, healed, eu viria no VOA e mostraria os dois resultados. Oi. Look. E no primeiro aparece os dois tumores, no rim e no pâncreas. Two tumors, 3.5 centimeters, 3 centimeters. One the pancreas, cancer pancreas, and right kidney. You can see it, 3.5. Vocês podem ficar com o papel. And then you can, you can keep this if you want to. Obrigado. We kept it. Outro... Now watch. O outro exame que foi no dia 19, cinco test, dias depois, está escrito amarelinha aqui, ó. Prayer. Nada no pâncreas Nothing e nada no rim. Toda a honra e glória para o Senhor Jesus. Fernanda. Fernanda. Ok. When she gets it right. Quando ela é co I gotta correct. get this cut out. Yeah. <laughs> correct. Correct. Acertar? Acertar. 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 Quando ela está acertar. You. Okay? If she misses. She had already started hearing a little bit before I started this. I want her to know when she is right. Born deaf, both ears, 100%. Fernanda. 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 There goes the mic. Fernanda. Fernanda. That's her mother off her left shoulder. Fernanda. Remember that mic is not projecting sound in the room, it's just for the camera. Fernanda. Fernanda. Mother can't take it anymore. <laughs> We're in uh, John Stott's church, uh, Verbo church, in São Paulo, or Guarulhos. And uh, this man just came up to me. His name is Paulo. And he wanted to tell me what happened eight years ago. What mm -hmm. And so, Paulo, share what happened. É quando o pastor esteve aqui há oito anos atrás. When past, when here, years ago, eu estava com uma artrite reumatoide crônica. I was with a eu não conseguia levantar minhas mãos. I wasn't able to raise my hands. E aí eu estava aqui no culto quando ele me deu a palavra de conhecimento. And I was here the service when he gave this word of knowledge. Ele começou a por cura, é, palavra de conhecimento sobre curas. And then e aí ele parou um tempo. And then he started praying about words of knowledge and then he stopped, stopped for a while. Olhou para o lado, para o outro. Looked to a side, to another place. Aí olhou em minha direção e falou, olha, 
Você que está com artrite reumatoide crônica, levanta com as mãos. Then he looked straight where I was and said, Hey, you that is suffering with a chronic rheumatoid arthritis, raise your hand. Aí, naquele momento, eu, minha mão não conseguia levantar muito, só levantava até aqui. In that moment, my hand was, I wasn't able to raise my hand completely. It would just go in this position. Quando eu fiz assim, senti meu pescoço queimando. And when I tried to raise my hand, I felt my neck burning. Aí minha mão foi levantando, levantando. And then I was being able to uh, raise my hand. E aí, curado. And then I was healed. Completely healed. And 30 days after the meeting, I went to the doctor to do some kind of examinations and So nothing, nothing was there in the examination. I was completely healed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Tell me. One of the things I want to point out, just in that very briefly, I said, if you have arthritis, lift your arms. He said, I couldn't lift my arms. I could only lift them this much. My shoulders wouldn't move. But when I did this, that's all I could do in obedience. Fire instantly came on my neck, went down my spine, and I was instantly healed of my arthritis. Eight years later, I've never had any more problems with severe arthritis. So I want everybody to stand up. If there's anything wrong with you, I just want you to check out and see if you got healed just watching because I believe God wants to heal people through the message and through the video. There's an anointing for healing. So test it out. Do what you can. If you say, I can't do what I can't hear, I need to get in the aisle. Then get into the aisle. If you need to lay down to test it out, lay down. If it, whatever it is, try to do what you can't do and just don't try it one, two, three times. I mean, I remember we were in, uh, he had, as you know, in a big Baptist church of several thousand. This guy had, as a deacon, he couldn't move his arms past here because he had 16 screws and all types of plates in his back, all the way down his scoliosis. I had, a, he had, a, I had an x-ray of it. And a lot of people had already been healed, but he hadn't. He just didn't do this for 30 seconds. He wanted to be healed so badly that he didn't want to draw away attention from when we transitioned to start teaching something else. He went outside in the hallway and for the next 15 minutes, he stands out in the hallway. And then he comes in. When it says Paul seen the man had faith, I said, what does that look like? Actually, you can tell by, often you can see it in somebody by the determination. They won't give up. If you are at least 80% better, you don't have to be 100% yet. Omar Cabrera taught me, do it this way. I said, why don't you say 100? He said, because we're only going to, it's only a few, you know, a few minutes. And God will be healing a lot more than are totally healed yet. So lower it down to a significant degree of healing like 80%, and you'll see what God's in the process of doing. When you see that, it will create so much more faith in other people, more things will start happening. If you are 80% better of, and you say, I've got three things, two of them haven't been touched at all, I'm not 80%, but one of them, I'm 80%, then that for that one, you can, you can wave both hands. If you get healed of another one later, you can wave two, wave again. If you get healed again, you can wave again, all right? 80% or better. Give God the glory. Wave both hands and do so for two minutes. Hey, Tom, you count. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Keep waving. One. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Eight, nine, ten. Keep waving. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 
23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Keep waving. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 38. How many did you get down here and over there? Well, keep waving. <laughs> we, a little bit of miscommunication. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Up in the balcony, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got 43. How many did you get? I, I'm, I'm all of them. Okay, it's 43. I get 43. Okay, now listen, don't sit down yet. How many of you are not 80%, but you're better? Wave one hand, only one, put it up high. Only wave one hand. If I was praying for you and you were an in, just an individual and you said, I'm not 80%, but I feel heat, I'm feeling energy or I'm getting better, I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna pray again. I, create, I, I treat the congregation, the crowd, like an individual person. So many of you are, God is touching you. We need to pray again. We're gonna bless what he's doing. Put your hand up if you're not 80%, but you're being touched and getting better. Just one hand, just one. Two means I'm at least 80%. Okay, I'm gonna pray, but I'm gonna ask those standing around you, if you see, keep your hand up. If you see somebody's got their hand up, just point your hand toward them and just agree and bless what God is doing. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for 43, but God, we're believing for at least 200 tonight. And so in the name of Jesus, I bless what you're doing. I bless what you're doing. I bless the people who you're touching, who've raised their hand. Your, the condition's improving. So we say, more, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord. We bless what you're doing in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you'd heal people that's got metal in their body. We pray you'd heal people that's got arthritis. We pray you'd heal people that's got ear problems. We pray, God, that you would heal people that's just stood up because they have a need and they believe that you could heal them. And we come in agreement and we bless them, God. If you have a hearing problem, start snapping your fingers by your ears. That's my friend and my translator in Brazil. He's seen hundreds of people healed. And that's why he said, snap your fingers by your ears. It's an act of obedience. God, we bless what you're doing in Jesus' name. Increase the heat, increase the power. More movement, freedom of movement, freedom of movement in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what's about to happen. Now, all right, everybody that just got prayed for, pay attention to your pain level and pay attention to your functional level. If you're at least 80% now and you weren't a while ago, and those of you who waved a while ago, don't wave again unless you got healed of a second thing. If you weren't able to wave your hands a while ago, but now you can, you're 80% or more, wave both hands over your head and do so for two minutes. I'll count the bottom, you count all the top. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Continue, continue, continue. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 10, 10, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, thank you, thank you. and I got 27. 36 and 27. How many is that? 63? 63. 63 more. How many is that total? 106. Now, you want to be encouraged? You want your faith to grow and be encouraged? This is not a statement of faith. This is a statement of faithfulness. Over the last probably seven or eight years, well, actually over the last over 20 years, whatever happens during the sermon, which we're still in, kind of, and the word of knowledge from the platform is very close to 50% of the numbers who get healed before the night's over when we invite the team to come up and pray for you with the laying on of hands. 
So we have 106 at this point, and we haven't started laying on the hands yet. So are you encouraged? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. No, oh, we haven't. Oh, Tom just said, Randy, we haven't even prayed yet. Oh, I think I did, didn't I? No. Okay. Prayer is legal. But this just proved it's not the prayer that heals you. But sometimes people have more faith when they hear a prayer. Or sometimes the prayer is a person in faith praying. But you got healed because of the ways of God you began to understand. I want to pray for you. Now, put your hand, if it's an organ problem, put your hand where you need the healing. I don't care what it is. You need a healing tonight, put your hand where you, if it's an organ, eyes, ears, heart, lungs, colon, whatever. If it's muscular or skeletal, begin to move it while I'm praying. Begin to move whatever it needs to be healed. Now, Father, I thank you for 106 healings, and I bless the people. And in the name of Jesus, I speak healing to their conditions. We pray for power to flow into their body, and we call it into right order. In the name of Jesus, we bless them. God, we pray that you would release healing through the host of heaven, through your angelic beings, healing gifts of the Holy Spirit to be released. Miracles, creative miracles. God, we pray in Jesus' name for the more glory to come to his name. And Father, I pray for those that's watching online and watching live, I bless you. I pray the power of God would come into your living room, come into your bedroom, wherever you're watching this at. For God, I pray that there'd be an anointing on this and if it's shown a rerun 10 years from now, it's still gonna have power and anointing to cause people to believe and be healed. And we have seen you do it. And so Lord, we bless those that's watching and we bless those that's here in Jesus' name. Amen. Now check your body out. Try to do what you can. Huh? Good. Okay. Check it out. Pain levels improved 80%. Movement or function improved 80%. Wave your hands over your head. Keep waving. Let's do it again. You get time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Over here on the, on the floor, 20. Anybody else in here on the floor got 20, 80% or more? 21. Okay. Thank you, God. Where? Over there's another one. Okay. 22. Seven? I got 22. 29 more. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm? 29 more, 135. Okay, I wanna ask, I wanna ask those of you that work at Global Awakening and God's given you a word of knowledge, come on up on the platform. If he's not giving you one, come up anyway and you'll get one. <laughs> I'm gonna ask those that's on the leadership team of Global uh, Legacy, uh, and God's given you a word Join us. Later, and I listen closely, they're getting ready to give words of knowledge. You all may be seated because they need, we need to see when, what they say. And, and by the way, listen, remember who gets the, the word that's your condition. And don't ask me later because I won't remember. All you have to remember is who had the word. And when they get done, they're going to come down here and they'll be joined by people that's approved by Bill's team. And I wanna have people ready to pray from, from the door to the door. If you have been in the past to our schools of ministry, and particularly if you have been with us in the nations and been on our ministry team, then you can join us. Okay, um, so you remember who it's going to be. All right, uh, who's got a mic? 
There's one. Your job is to stand up as soon as your condition's called out because for those of you that are not from churches that do this a lot, the feedback loop is essential to growing and seeing the people come into a greater anointing. They need to know when they were right and when they were wrong. So don't, don't put yourself above them. Say, I don't want to draw any attention to me. I'm going to be a little embarrassed. Well, just embarrass them. Just think, look, made it look like they didn't hear from God. The other thing, it always happens. Some people won't stand up. They're just stubborn. They're more concerned about their dignity than God's honor. They have a false humility thinking it's, I don't want to draw any attention to you. The fear is you have the fear of man. So you need to stand up. Because if you stand up when they're right and people see that there's a lot of people have the condition called out, it creates faith to grow in the room. But if they give words of knowledge and nobody stands up, the faith that's in the room right now will start going down and it won't be our fault. <laughs> We're doing our best. We need you to work with us. Okay. Okay. A anyone with arthritis in your body, please stand up. And uh, if you have... Uh, a head injury from a, a trauma from a head injury. Anyone? Uh, <clears throat> L5 and S1 joint in the middle of your back with injury. You've been injured or some kind of trauma. Uh, the Lord is healing that right now in Jesus' name. All discs and vertebrae coming back into alignment right now. Tendinitis in the wrist as well as tennis elbow. Then I saw a picture of a scalpel cutting into the skull and a scar in the skull. So um, any lingering effects from a brain surgery? Uh, I feel like I've had uh, somebody is here with a clavicle injury. Is this your clavicle? Yes. Yeah, some type of injury here. Yes. And then also there's some type of trauma that surrounded that, that God wants to heal you of? Um, someone who fell down, hit their head, and you've had constant migraines, head pain since then. Yeah. I'm going to go with that also. Uh, migraines that you've had your entire life is going to get healed tonight. Okay. okay, date of June 3rd, also tennis elbow and thrombosis. I saw an image of a dancer and um, you have like an injury to your legs that uh, affected the way that you dance or made you unable to dance. I feel like the Lord is healing that tonight. Uh, also a burning sensation in the left wrist. And then I felt a, a, a pain on the top of my head, but I don't, I don't, I feel like it's an irritation actually, not a pain, like something that's just irritating. Uh, and then the last one is uh, 62. Uh, the number 62 and colon cancer. I saw a picture of a spine and I believe that God wants to heal spinal injuries. Uh, if you have a spinal injury, God wants to heal that. And as well, I feel like somebody's here, you have cancer and you have a taste of metallic in your mouth and God wants to heal you tonight. A woman with a sore shoulder and there's no apparent reason, it just is sore and it just won't go away. It's been there for a very long time. Someone with pain in the left knee, right on the inside, and I had a picture of somebody hitting their knee, but you can jump in either way, pain right there, and then pain on the top of the right big toe, running from the top of the foot down to the big toe. All right, we're getting ready to pray, but the Lord said, pray for the ones who stand up. And tell them you're going to include in the prayer, it's for those that are standing. So if any of those words were for you, it would behoove you to stand up if you want to be included in the prayer. Okay, put your hand where your problem is. Some of you will be healed during this prayer. You won't even have to get in line and wait. You'll be able to leave earlier. Tom, you get that, I'll get this. I want to see if it happened. 
How many of you just got healed by these words of knowledge before we prayed? Check. If you're 80% better, wave both hands over your head. And keep waving. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I did too. Um, Twelve more. Okay, twelve. You got fifteen? Okay. All right, now we're going to pray. Uh, but I want to do that for this reason. I want you to see it was the power of the word, not because the speaker gave it. I want you to see the power of the word of knowledge. Not whether it's a kid or an elderly person or a person with special needs. When they get a word from God, it's God speaking. And sometimes we have a tendency, if it comes from the speaker, I have more faith than it does if it comes from somebody else. But if it's accurate, it's from the Lord. It's for you. So thank you. Twelve of you. Fifteen maybe. God, in the name of Jesus, we bless them. We bless, Lord, we pray for those migraines to stop. God, we pray for the arthritis. Lord, we, we, we saw you heal 12 out of 13 women in a row of, of uh, not rheumatoid, but uh, uh, psoriatic arthritis. So we pray, Lord, for anybody of any kind of arthritis. In Jesus' name, we pray for the power of God to go into their body, the joints, Lubricate their joints. May the Holy Spirit be like WD-40 in their joints. Open it up, the brokenness, stuckness, frozenness. Break it open in the name of Jesus. Pray for problems from trauma to the head in Jesus' name to be healed and whiplash to be healed. God, we pray and come in agreement with every word that they gave. Yes, we say, yes and amen. Even as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1, how important it was. So the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So we come in agreement with the promises of God and say yes and amen to these words. Release fire, release power, release your glory, release your healing anointing for those that's here and those watching in the name of Jesus. More God, glorify your name and glorify the name of Jesus. Okay, check it out. Take a few minutes, or a few seconds. Check it out. If you have 80% reduction in pain or 80% improvement, which is significant, wave both hands over your head. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thank you, God. Thirteen. Thank you, God. 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 And uh, you guys, in a moment, I'm gonna let you go down and they're gonna start coming to you. But we also wanna get, if you've been with us on an, in the nations and you've been on our ministry team, then we, we wanna recruit you. I wanna see that we got people from that wall to that wall so it doesn't take long. People don't have to wait a long time to get prayer. That's a sign of love, okay? Oh, but I wanna check out, everybody be seated for a moment. Is there anybody here that you are of Scottish descent and you have a, a problem in the abdomen, somewhere in the abdomen, kind of lower in the abdomen, and you're of Scottish descent, or and this would make, I, I felt like at first, your last name is a Scottish name, like, you know, a mix something. Uh, <laughs> But I'm, I just want to know if, if that was the Lord or not. Are, is there anybody here that, uh, where? You have that? 
Okay. All right. Anybody? You do too? There's two? There's three? Four? Okay. Five. There's, there's a problem here. And you have, you're of Scottish descent or have a last name. It would be a Scotch name. Either way, Scottish descent or... And if you're not sure, just take it anyway. <laughs> put your hand where you hurt. All of you put, raise your hand toward him. This is the last thing I want to do before we pray for the last two prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless these people that have the pain in the lower abdomen or in the abdomen. I bless those that stood that they are of Scottish descent or have a Scottish like name or those that just believe that's for me. I bless them. I command the pain to leave. I command the pain to leave and the problem to be done with. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I bless her and I bless those four up there. Five, six of them up there. Seven, eight, oh, a whole bunch. Nine, 10 of them. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Well, God, we bless them. We bless them. We bless them. In the name of Jesus, more God, more power, power go through their body, healing take place in their body. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, more, more. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit touch you a little bit. I think some of you, or there may be some others, you're, you say, hey, I'm Scottish, but I don't have that pain. What, are you Scottish or have a last name that's a Scottish name and you have pain on the outside of the right foot down in this area? Anybody have that? Wave at me. Okay. One. Who else? Two. Right now, I actually, I don't have pain in that part of my foot, but it's hurting right now. There's three. Thank you, God. So I believe that's going to be healed too. So just, just, um, Bleed for your foot. You don't have to reach down and touch it. Some people can't reach that far. Um, so, Father, I just think you're going to heal left, the outside of the left, the right foot, the, out foot the, the right side of the right foot in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I just bless those that's responded to that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, either one of those conditions, abdomen or the right foot, and your pain has gone down by 80% or the, your function has been restored by 80%, wave both hands over your head. <laughs> wave both hands and keep waving. Num one, two, wave both hands. Two, half in the balcony, I can't see. Anybody else? Two down here, anybody in the balconies? They're waving both hands, okay, yeah, sometimes you, it's hard to see. Three, four, if you're really excited about it, you stand up and wave. It makes it easier to see. Yeah, there's four, five, six. Thank you, God. Seven, yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right, last prayer before. Uh, can we, those of you that's been with me on the nation who want to be on praying, help me out tonight. Those of you who's been in one of our schools on healing and gone through the whole school, like this is, and you've completed it. Um, you want to help pray tonight. Those of you that's on the Bethel ministry team, you can help. We would love to have your help as well. Come on up to the front before I have the people come. I want to get you caught in a traffic jam. So come on up real quick. Line up across here. Ministry team. You, on, you know who you are. Come on. We're going to have a Wow. We're going to have a lot of people to, for you to pray for and a lot of people to be prayed by. As they're coming forward, the last thing I want to pray, and uh, Robert, Robert, how many do we have? 196? People, this is going to be not a good meeting. This is going to be a really good meeting. We're, if we have 196 now, we're going to have close to 200 healed in the next uh, 30 minutes. All of you that's on the ministry team, before you start praying, listen to what I'm going to say. It's going to be very important. Before you leave this room tonight, I want you to go to who's in charge of, of getting the number tonight on Bethel's team. Who's going to be one of the last persons to leave? Is that you? What's your name? Jamila. Jamila. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, everybody. Be, 
If you're going to be praying for the sick tonight and you're on this team, this is Jamila. You don't go home till you stop by Jamila and tell her how many people you prayed for that got 80% better. Okay? All right. Did you hear that over here? Jamila, you're going to stop by and tell her. All right. Now, as they're getting ready to pray, I'd like to know how many of you had a significant healing and you're so excited about it, you'd like to come up and give a testimony as they're praying down here to just keep them encouraged and give God the glory. I'd like to get about 12 testimonies that you would come up and you say, this is what, how much pain I was in, this is what I couldn't do, and this is what I can do. Would you come up onto the platform? I need 12 of you that would be I want to give God the glory. Just come up on the platform. If you're, going, if you're coming up to give your testimony, wave your hand at me, because I don't have anybody up here yet. This is important. This is important for the people watching by video. Come on, come on down. Give, I feel like Price is right. Uh huh. We're, we're wanting people with testimonies. Come on up and start giving them as people are getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to release everybody to come up for prayer. So I don't want you caught in the traffic jam. If you were healed and you want to give God the glory, come up onto the platform. And uh, right here, make sure there's a way they can get to the platform. Make a break there. So you come up over here, or over here, or here. All right. Okay, Robert's going to help with the testimony. We need some more testimony. You got a testimony? Good, come on up. Hmm? Past conference. <laughs> oh. I'd like to see if we can get 12 from tonight. Okay, one, one second, we got two. Thank you, Lord. All right, now, everybody stand. In the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. And I bless you as you go to your car to leave or come to the front for prayer. I bless you in either. May you all be overtaken by the love of God, by the grace of God, and by the power of God. And may what he did to you, he begin to do through you. May your faith be increased and your understanding of the ways of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can come to the front Come to the people who had the word for you. If you weren't healed 80% or more, come to the front. If there's no word for you, but you need healing, we have more people. Just go ahead and come to the front for prayer. And those of you that's, those of you that's praying, if somebody gets healed, clap your hands loudly five times. <clears throat> okay. You can do the interview. Okay, uh, what's your name? My name's Gail, I'm here from Reading. Okay, Gail, what happened? Everybody, you're going to have to speak up. It's kind of loud. Bring us up in the amplification of the testimonies. It's pretty loud. Okay. Gail, so what, what did the Lord do tonight? Well, I stood because I'm of Scottish descent. And I kept testing my clogged sinus on the left side because that's what I was believing for healing for. I could not breathe. I could not get any air into the left side of my sinus, and I've had this infection for a few years. You, you had the infection for years? A, a couple of years at least, A couple yes. of years. And right. I've tried all kinds of things to get rid of it, and it's, it's been a problem. I've been tired of it. Really close. And I can breathe now. I can breathe on this side. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This, this lady. Hi, what's your name? Susan. Susan, what did the Lord do for you tonight? 
Well, I'm a pastor, and so I play the keys a lot for the worship team. Two years ago, I broke my hand so severely that I had to have surgery and have two screws in my left hand, and it always aches and it's very stiff, and I just figured that's just it. But tonight, all of a sudden, I just felt like my hand is really limber. I feel like the screws are actually gone, y'all. So thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hi, what's your name? My name's Chelsea. Chelsea, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Two years ago, I broke my ankle, and I wasn't able to move it around without immense pain, and now I can move my ankle and have no pain at all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Um, my name's Frances Wilson, um, and I've had a, like you called out, the first, when they first called out arthritis, I have arthritis, like a neurosis in my, my neck spine. So my, both my arms have been numb from here down, this one burning with fire. So when they first called out the first one, my whole right arm, like the feeling went all the way to my fingers. So I was able to feel in my, my right hand. And then you called out the burning in my left wrist and the tendonitis. And so right after you called that, I just started moving it. And so now I have no numbness. Like there's no fire, there's no numbness. Like my arms, so. Thank you, Lord. Like, thank you, Jesus. Come on over. Hi, what's your name? I'm Rachel. Rachel, what, what, what did the Lord do tonight? Well, the very first time that we stood up, uh, my shoulder pain decreased by about 80%. But the big thing was, there's no way that I could have held my hands above my head for two minutes and I waved the whole time. <laughs> I had shoulder you, surgery about 15 years ago, and I haven't been able to do anything above my head for more than maybe 10 to 30 seconds. And so Amen. I couldn't hold it above. And then my friend was, uh, when you were praying for right feet, her left foot was healed, so. <laughs> so how many healings did you get? Well, well I got one, my friend got one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank you, Lord. Hi, what's your name? My name's Cassandra. Um, there was two people that were talking about something that was like connected to trauma and to like feelings with the head bearing like pain or like some kind of tingling. When I was 10 years old, which is 26 years ago, I got mauled by a wolf dog and I had, I have scar tissue in two different places on my head and I can't, normally I couldn't even handle like anything, like even a ponytail or putting things on my head and I, it feels all the time hurting, but a lot of times it's really uncomfortable too and I don't have any sensations at all, like, and it was nerve damage. So it's totally restored, and it was- How many years ago was that? 26 years ago. 26 years, she's had that condition. She got healed tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hi, what's your name? My name is Pat Parker. And what, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Uh, I stood up because I have three conditions. One of them is neuropathy and arthritis in my foot, and I had to walk flat, and I'm in pain a lot. Now I can stand on my toes. I've never been able to do that since that affliction started. And how many years ago was that? Uh, I've had that for about five years. Five years. You couldn't go up on your toes for five, five years, years, and now yeah, you can. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is that I was just diagnosed with a more hearing loss. I have 38%, they said, here. And then this one was my good ear, but it's down to 80%. And I can't process words. So when you were speaking, I didn't understand a lot of your words, but I have the hearing aid out, and I can process the words with this ear. Amen. It's, it's not complete, but it's on its way. Amen. Thank you, and Lord. And I need the third one. Amen. Third, you have a third one. one. Is a heart valve. Three healings. I need. No, I need that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi. What's your name? Becky. Becky. Well, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Well, I've had arthritis. Uh, it's been very uncomfortable for since it's been raining, and uh, it's really sort of funny because. I was feeling better, but I didn't feel like I could raise my hand for 70. And then I was sitting there and I started feeling better and feeling better. And finally the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, I guess you know you're being healed. So I know I'm being healed. <laughs> so, Thank you, Lord. 
How long had you had the arthritis? How many years? Just, uh, well, I've had just a small amount uh, for a while, but just, you know, it's been raining so much here. This year it was just horrible, you know, but it's just so much better. It's almost gone. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Irina. And what, what happened? What, what did the Lord do for you? Um, so, breast cancer, and I had uh, lymph nodes the uh, size of a, a, like a pea, and a scar from lumpectomy, and it was all hard. And uh, as we were praying, it was keep on going, decreasing and decreasing. So, um, I believe that it's a progress of healing, uh, because everything is under my armpit, is, uh, it's gone at the moment, and uh, if, I believe it's going towards the, uh, my chest area. And how long have you had that? 2019. 18. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you God. Hi, what's, what's your name? My name is Danielle. Danielle, uh, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Well, 20 years ago, I had a major trauma, and after that, I had gut and arthritis issues just as a result of the trauma, and I've had it ever since. And just from, every time I've been trusting God and resting with God the last few months, um, I've felt a release of all that, kind of like you said, WD-40 for the joints, and I just felt that happening just stronger and more and more, and God kept saying, I'm doing more and more in you. Um, during the time when you guys were praying and pretty much every spot that was na named on here like I've had some sort of trauma or pain in those areas. So you had that pain for 20 years? Yes, I've had that pain in different locations. All, all the locations, a lot of the locations Arthritic names. pain, different yeah. parts of your body for 20 years? Yeah. And you felt it leaving? Yeah, it's like my, I'm tall and strong right now and I think it has to do with what you talked about. It has to do with every time I rest and know God, it just automatically happens. Um, Thank you, God. Yeah, so it's the glory of God's character for sure. 20? 20 years, arthritic pain moving to different parts of her body, it's gone. 20 years of pain, gone. Thank you, Lord. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name's Leah. Leah, uh, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Tonight, the Lord healed my neck from a car accident. Um, before the word of knowledge, I stood up for prayer for healing for my neck because I couldn't move my neck. This is the farthest I could move it, and I couldn't really move side to side. But after receiving prayer, um, after Randy prayed, I can now do full motion. Amen. And everything feels so much better. How many, how many years ago was the car accident? Um, it was about 10 years ago. So you not had that movement for 10 years no. from the car accident not, to your neck? Not till tonight. Until tonight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hi, what's your, what's your name? So my name is Hannah, and some of you may have noticed that I walked in here earlier today with a knee brace, because I had a very bad uh, knee sprain, and now, after some prayers, I'm actually able to do this. Amen. It's, it still hurts a little bit, but I can actually bend my knee, which, which I was not able to do earlier today. And how long has that been an issue for you? It's been an issue for the last three weeks. From an injury? Yes. Thank you, Lord. You're welcome. God bless you. Hi, what's your name? I'm Kayla. Kayla, what, what did the Lord do for you tonight? Well, you were calling out Scottish descent uh, right foot pain, so I didn't stand up because it was my left leg that was hurting, and I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden the pain left my leg. <laughs> on the left side, I, I was like, it's a running injury and I'm training for a marathon, so um, the last several days I haven't been able to run very well and it's completely gone. Amen. So. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ministry team positioning throughout the room to kind of.